Hey guys, sorry for taking so long to do this video. Um, the past couple of weeks I've had a crazy schedule at university, so I haven't been able to put as many videos as I'd like to put up. But I'm back today, and today we're going to take a look at the 2018 AQA paper. Now, I will be providing some predictions. They'll be quite vague because I'm not a teacher, so I don't have access to the latest materials on the um, AQA exam board. But there are certain things that we can guess and predict, obviously. No one knows what's going to be coming up. So we can sit through together, uh, we'll have a look at what the paper is going to be made up of, and then we'll have a look at those topics which I think could be the more difficult questions and which ones are going to be the easier ones. So I first of all just want to take a look at this idea that AQA put out this ramping idea. What this means is that in your paper, the questions are going to get progressively harder. So they say that the first couple of questions, then maybe I think there's ten questions now in the paper, so maybe the first two or three are going to be quite easy, and it says to build up your confidence in the exam. Then as you move in through the middle, the difficulty varies, so some are slightly harder, some are slightly easier, um, just to test the water, see how you're getting on. And then obviously the final three or two questions are going to be your difficult um, make and break sort of questions idea if you like um, so yeah and it's slightly different for foundation and higher tier but I'm not going to spend too long on that because it's a general thing everyone knows that the questions generally get harder through the exam so you can go and check that out on the AQA exam board if you wanted to on the website there um, so your paper is going to be broken down obviously you have two papers now but each paper is going to be broken down and 40% of the marks is going to come from demonstrating your knowledge. So that's basic recall, regurgitate the knowledge that your teacher's told you that you got from the textbook sort of thing. So like explain the process of photosynthesis and so on. That's going to be part of the 40% to demonstrate your knowledge. 40% um, is going to come from applying this knowledge. So maybe the effects of drinking alcohol on teenagers or maybe they might get some rats in the exam question for you to apply your knowledge. Who knows? The final 20% is going to come from evaluating ideas from the experiments within the course and so on. Additionally, 10% of these marks is going to come from calculations. So it could be any across any of them applying, demonstrating or evaluating. They'll ask you to get some calculations in there as well. So what this means is that on your exam paper, 10 marks is going to be involved in calculations. So you need to be brushing up on your math skills and also including your experiment skills because that's 30 marks between evaluating, experimenting and then calculations. So you need to make sure you get on top of them. Extended response questions are typically 4 to 6 marks on your paper. Now not all 4, 5 and 6 mark questions are extended responses. If they are extended response questions they're going to be measuring your ability to communicate ideas properly and to make a coherent answer. So that means you're going to have to have spelling, scientific words in there, and these can actually add up and get you to that top grade. So make sure that you know how to spell and how to use scientific words. These four, five, six mark questions um, typically include things like calculate, evaluate, compare and explain. So make sure you know what them command words are asking you for. Um, I will be doing a future video explaining the differences between them. Um, so make sure that if you're asked to explain something you explain it and not just describe it sort of thing, okay? Um, the only thing available on the exam board website at the minute is the specimen paper. Now, I tend not to like going off specimens because for some reason exam boards just tend to make specimen papers really hard to put you off. I mean, I sat my specimen paper for my A-levels in biology and I got like an E, I think. Um, I sat the exam and I got an A, so I don't like, ex I don't like specimen papers, I had bad experience with them. so. There are a few things that I can tell you, so generally from my experience they tend to be a lot harder than the actual exam. Um, they're not a fair reflection of the questions on there because they haven't gone through rigorous control measures. 
like the exam will, so there might be some questions on there which you just don't understand. That's just because they haven't been through the strict measures that your exam will be. So sometimes the questions can be a lot harder than they're intended to. Um, but generally the specimen paper was a bit of a mixed bag. Um, it included a, a lot of the range of the knowledge, so that makes me think, are you going to try and include all of the topics in this paper? Because 100 marks, they would, they would be able to do that, 10 marks of each unit or something like that. But they might also go the other way and just focus on a select few topics sort of thing and just add in a couple of one or two marks for the others. I'm not too sure, I can't really tell at the moment. Um, so we're just gonna let's take a quick look at the overall specification for the two papers and it, I'll give you some ideas of what I think would be the harder and more difficult questions and where they could try and get some six mark questions in. So the first topic is cell biology. Now hopefully you don't find this too difficult. I would imagine this will be quite early on in the paper. Um, if they were going to bring it on to the second half of the paper, maybe it would be the culturing microorganisms, which is for biology only people. Um, maybe that would appear on the second half of the paper. I'm not too sure. I don't, I don't think that they would have a lot of I don't think there'll be a lot of hard questions on cell biology. Maybe labelling cells, explaining what cell specialisation is, um, getting stem cells in there. Although saying that, um, stem cells was quite often a six mark question evaluating the use of stem cells. And I've got a feeling that this year they are going to try and include that evaluation sort of aspect of it. Whether it's a six mark question or whether they appear quite a lot in the paper, they, they're just trying to make it more applicable to the real world. So they're going to want you to try and apply this knowledge to the real world and evaluate the use of these different experiments like, like stem cells. Transporting cells, so diffusion, osmosis, active transport. Again, these are generally pretty simple concepts and it's just in case they ask you to apply it to a random situation that we have no idea what's going on. So just remember what you know and what you don't know and then base your answers off that. They can't ask you to they can't ask you to explain something that you don't know. So just always revert back to the knowledge that you do know. Okay, so um, organisation, the second unit. Again, it's a pretty simple unit, but they have got some really key topics in this one, really. So the circulatory system, the digestive system, enzymes, and so on. So again, I, I would expect this, maybe, if they were going down the easier route, they'd expect a bit of just explaining what enzymes do but they could bring out some really difficult questions on this um, explaining the circulatory system, explaining the components of the blood maybe and yeah, um, I would expect this to come up in the second half of the paper maybe and give you some difficult questions to work around and get your teeth into. Um, the third unit is infection and response so this is about communicable and non-communicable diseases explaining the difference between viral, bacterial and fungal diseases um, diseases between humans and plants and so on and again this they could bring out some difficult questions on this and not necessarily difficult but <laughs> I just contradict myself there but not necessarily difficult questions but it might be the sort of question where they give you a lot of information about one disease explain the effects of it and then I'll go right tell me what's the, tell me what's going on with this disease how is it affecting the population of this place explain how it's being transmitted between people so it, it, they could bring out some really difficult questions on this unit so it's a unit to watch out for um, just to add on to this bit the section of mono, monoclonal antibodies for biology only students they could ask you to evaluate the use of these and it could come up as a six mark question bioenergetics so this one includes photosynthesis and respiration there's these are the two key almost reactions taking place in our bodies and in plants. So definitely expect this topic to come up. Um, maybe not a difficult one, maybe the, the simple processes, but it's the understanding and maybe they're going to try to apply it to different situations to confuse you. So expect it to come up, expect it to be a challenging question, but something that's not too difficult, maybe in that middle phase between the, the easy and the difficult questions. Okay, so homeostasis, um, obviously maintaining body temperature, things like that. Um, the topics on here that I think, def I think the brain and the eye, I've got a funny feeling 
that for biology only students the brain and the eye could be some difficult questions on them so either it's something to do with the lenses and how the lenses refract the different lights I don't know but difficult questions coming up in them I think the functions again biology only students watch out for the functions of the kidney um, including ADH because that's that was a difficult topic for me at my A levels so I think they're going to be trying to challenge everything and this is a topic that I think would be quite challenging and there could be some difficult questions coming up on this especially because they've brought this down from the A levels um, again in this topic there's a lot to go through um, glucose and the controlling of glucose um, diabetes and dialysis things like that they difficult questions again they could ask you to compare type 1 and type 2 diabetes and the differences between treating them they could ask you to do the dialysis versus the kidney transplant thing um, I just really expect this to be the six mark question to be evaluating the use of something or comparing something I just really expect it to be evaluating something these long answer questions because that way they can include a lot of information and they might even bundle together calculations, experiments and evaluation and evaluating in these six mark questions. The inheritance topic, so in DNA structure, um, understanding how variation occurs, um, mutations, things like that, this is again a difficult topic, there's a lot of difficult topics coming into this now and I'm just picking out the key points of each one and I know it, I could, I've just said pretty much everyone's hard but these are just my ideas that which are going to be difficult I haven't chose, I've chose these topics because these are the ones that when I was writing the GCSE guide that I found good, that's a, they're hard topics for you these are what they're bringing down from A levels and I expect them to be in the second half of the paper really difficult questions because the difficult, anyway it's, it's difficult knowledge um, ecology is quite a nice topic um, it's boring I find but it's quite a nice topic to answer questions on and if you get a long answer question on it it's usually the one with again lots of information and they just say right evaluate the use of this or evaluate the differences um, make sure you know your abiotic and biotic factors food chains things like that pyramids of biomass it's a dead easy topic so even if they ask you a difficult question on it it should be easy for you to answer so they're just my ideas um, just a very brief overview there's nothing I can't say anything specific I think this is going to come up um, I'm obviously not an examiner I'm not a teacher I don't have access to the restricted resources so all I can do is explain what the paper is going to be on and hopefully you guys will find it useful thanks for watching make sure you check out my website and make sure you like comment and subscribe